Dear all, welcome. Welcome, we would like to say you good morning and uh, welcome and the second Eastern Partnership Youth Forum. And uh, this inspiring day to, uh, day to day has started with such an inspiring dance, isn't it? Yes. And we think that artists really deserve huge applause from our side. Yesterday we started to, to practice different types of applauses. One is the regular one, just as we do it usually, right? The other one, what we tried, this was a rainbow, rainbow right. applause. We start from the left and we go to the right. And the other one was a firework applause. Yeah, so let's try all three of them for the artist again. <laughs> so with such a moment, we would like to officially open our forum. Uh, we have started to open it yesterday on, uh, in a non-formal atmosphere, but today this is a real, real moment to open it officially. And as I said before, we are really, really happy that so many people are here our participants, our guests, our um, friends. So welcome, welcome again. <laughs> My name is Natalia, I am from Latvia and I will be one of the leading moderators you will see so often on the stage. And I will be moderating this uh, forum together with my colleague. Georgi. Uh, which is a very rare name in Georgia, so you need some time to practice it, Georgi. So, uh, we are, will not be alone, so there is one more person who will be moderating, but a little bit supporting from the stage, it's Laimonas. Yeah. So he will be around all the time, so uh, we will get to know him better later on. So I was wondering, did you already meet your neighbors? If you look around, do you know everyone? If not, then you get one minute to um, find out who are you sitting with. Yeah? Say at least your name. Hello. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's sorry. Uh, Can proceed. Hmm? You can. Yeah. I believe that people around us very often inspire us uh, as uh, the music, as dance, and also the words what we hear from the people who are talking to us. Today with us we have very dear guests who came to greet us and say a few words to inspire our work for two days in order to find different solutions and ideas how to deal with the situation of unemployment of young people and basically to improve the situation of employment of young people. So we would like, here to, uh, we would like to invite here on the stage one of the very important guests, uh, the Speaker of uh, Latvian Parliament, Misenara Murnetze. Hello, good morning. Do you hear me? What inspiring event we do have today. Well, and Madam Minister, representatives of European Commission, dear participants of Eastern Partnership Youth Forum, with a great pleasure I welcome you to National Library of Latvia at the opening of Eastern Partnership Youth Forum. I heartily appreciate 
the willingness of young people to, re to raise a voice against youth unemployment. I believe this forum is a platform for youth to express the future they want and to have their voices, voices heard. Our societies face some of the major challenges, the mismatch between skills and labor market, the transition from school to labor market, and the frustration produced by unemployment it itself. The youth unemployment has reached record levels in the EU. It causes not only significant economic costs for member states, but also the long-term social consequences. Investing in youth should not be a question of choice, but necessity for getting out of crisis. Private sector, as the main beneficiary of skilled labor force, should contribute to practical learning programs. It should be done with the systems of transition from school to labor market. But we must also consider that the quality of those placements provides decent living standards for youth. Ladies and gentlemen, the notion of solidarity is getting more present in public discourse. The way how we understand solidarity impacts our belief in better functioning of our communities and societies. It also impacts how we understand the current and future affiliation between the EU and its neighborhood. Your participation today is a form of solidarity. It is one of the main fundaments of a healthy and strong democratic system. It means mutual understanding between people and institutions. The Latvian presidency in the EU has put the Eastern Partnership as priority on its agenda. And this forum demonstrates that the Eastern Partnership is not only government-to-government -government interaction. The civil society is a key player which needs to be engaged also in the future. Our success will depend on the joint work with our friends. Dear participants of the forum, you are the messengers of hope. I believe that there is no culture of peace without cultural diversity, tolerance, dialogue, solidarity, and social justice. Therefore, we need to address these concepts through events like this, through youth exchange among youth groups from different backgrounds and different origins. The solidarity cannot be invented or created out of nothing, but rather it has to be developed. <laughs> Europe must reaffirm its support to new, to new generations in its neighborhood, especially post-Maidan. Regional solidarity should be built through connecti connecting Ukrainian activists with counterparts in other countries. The United States anthropologist Margaret Mead once said that the young, free to act on their initiative, can lead their elders in the direction of the unknown. The young must, the young must ask the questions that we would never think to ask. Today, I give you my trust to work together, not only on asking, but also on answering those questions. Thank you, and I wish you successful discussions. Thank you, Mrs. Murnietze. And now I have pleasure to invite Minister of Education and Science of Republic of Latvia, Mrs. Marite Seile. Please. Yeah. Good morning, uh, dear Excellencies, ladies, gentlemen, dear participants. Today is my pleasure to, to invite you to this great, great event and really to explain some main guiding principles of uh, Latvian presidency with regard to, to 
use work. Being young can mean so many things, but amongst others, being young entails a period of transition. Transition when one reaches the age of maturity, becomes a graduate when we start our professional life and life independent from parents. Such change is rapid and is often intertwined. So many layers and possible futures are, are, are all happening at once. Cross-sectorial cooperation, that is a close cooperation between the government and non-governmental actors, is the key to successfully meeting the needs and interests of young people. Leaving all the support mechanisms solely to the state, we will miss the time when the person is in real need for support. When taking care of young people needs, non-governmental organizations and municipalities are great partners. They are much closer to their needs in everyday life. Through cooperation of various actors, matters related to the participation and support of young people can be addressed much more efficiently and gain in effectiveness when it comes to results. Cross-sectorial cooperation provides young people with opportunities for personal development, development of various skills, such as entrepreneurship and networking skills, and it encourage, encouraging taking responsibility for one's decisions and strengthening the will to set and achieve visionary goals in lives and careers. Well-being of every young person today ensures the well-being of our societies in the long term. The Latvian presidency has brought cross-sectorial cooperation to the forefront of the agenda. Through European Union member states being unified in this belief, sharing the best practices, and seeking more and more new solutions to empower our young generation, we can help our youngsters to prosper in their individual lives. This is an important first step towards our common goals. When it comes to developing skills for personal growth and work life of young people in parallel with the formal education, I would particularly like to note the youth work. It means that the youngsters is ready to step up to help one of his peers be proactive and active not wait for the state to step in first. Voluntary work and the variety of informal education programs also play an invaluable role. And that is why it is crucial to strive for recognizing and valuing skills and competencies gained this way among both the young people and by employers. Initiatives of informal education and of youth organizations dedicated to young people not involved in the formal education or employment are of particular importance. It is much more difficult for them to set goals and identify ways and possibilities to achieve them. Informal and approach and, and encouragement coming from other young people can be the most powerful and direct support. It is peer-to-peer -peer advice that speaks the same language and often of a very similar experience. And I really do wish all the participants of this forum successful, enriching, and really pr productive days to come. I look forward to your recommendations to be developed during the forum, and I hope those will become a valuable tool for jointly developing our common youth policy in, in Europe and in Eastern partnership countries. And I really do strongly believe that success of our countries 
do, develop, do depend on the success of individual of individual success of every person in this room and of success of our youth in in countries and um, i really hope that this event will empower us be also the very proactive actors in an open and, and tolerant civil society. Have a very successful days here in Riga. Thank you, Miss Minister, for such an inspiring words. We are so many individuals here and also representing organizations and different experiences to share those days and to find out also new solutions and I innovative ideas. I would like to invite here another guest, dear guest, uh, Mr. Yuri Spoikans, the ambassador at large of the Ministry of the Foreign Affairs of Latvia. Please. Good morning, dear Speaker of the Parliament, Minister, representatives of the European Commission, participants of the Second Eastern Partnership Youth Forum. On behalf of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Latvia, I would like to warmly welcome in Riga all participants of this very important event. Eastern Partnership is a policy which provides the opportunity to the European Union and the six European neighbors to build closer links and ties based on mutual interests and wishes. The EU vision of the Eastern neighborhood remains a vision about the countries adjacent to the European Union living in peace, harmony, and prosperity. The European Union is ready and willing to provide the necessary means and support to those willing to construct this reality on the ground through systemic implementation of the necessary reforms. During almost six years of the Eastern Partnership, we have managed to advance significantly our relations. Three countries of the Eastern Partnership, namely Georgia, Moldova, and Ukraine, have decided to enter into closer relations with the European Union through signing the association agreement with a deep and comprehensive trade area as its integral part. Moldovan citizens nowadays are enjoying the possibility of visa-free travels to the European Union. Georgia and Ukraine are working hard to reach the same goal in a foreseeable future. At the same time, I would like to stress the European Union remains open to developing ties with Armenia, Azerbaijan and Belarus based on their level of ambitions with regard to the European Union. The use itself as a part of a broader civil society can and should play an important part in further bridging links between the European Union and the countries of peace and partnership. The transnational nature of challenges young people is facing both in the European Union and the countries of Eastern Partnership, namely unemployment, issues of entering the job market, educational opportunities will be discussed during these days in Latvia. I wish you interesting deliberations, discussions, and more importantly, solutions to these pressing issues. The fourth Eastern Partnership Summit will take place in the very same building in more than three months. It will serve as an opportunity to take stock of the progress achieved since the last summit in Vilnius and set new goals in cooperation. The summit will emphasize the mutual interest in further advancements of ties based on free and sovereign choices of the six partners. The summit will reconfirm once more the inclusive nature of the Eastern Partnership and its non-confrontational nature with regard to third states. The recommendations of the second Eastern Partnership Youth Forum to the summit's participants will constitute an essential part of the growing ties between the European Union and the countries of Eastern Partnership. Once more, welcome and have a nice day in Riga. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Poikans. Just to remind you, this was Ambassador at Large for Eastern Partnership uh, of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Latvia. Thank you. And now I would like to invite Director for Erasmus Plus, Unit uh, Youth and Sport Unit for the uh, European Commission. Mr. Antonio Silva Mendes. Good 
morning. It's a great pleasure to be with you today here in this uh, wonderful building. I would like to thank you, the Latvian Presidency, for organizing this event in the name of uh, the uh, senior, um, the, the person from the Parliament, the Minister, representative for the Foreign, foreign Affairs. Really, uh, this was an excellent opportunity for sharing some ideas and to have you to discuss. Because whatever we do at the European level, uh, we can say some good words, but in fact, the real action is uh, based on uh, your side. So really, we, uh, I hope you, that you have uh, an excellent opportunity to discuss and to really to come with some good ideas, some ideas, some very concrete elements that we can to, uh, 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 to act on. I appreciate very much Latvian to make this uh, Eastern prior, um, Partnership priority for the presidency and with the great focus on young people. Uh, as you know, we are crossing at European level and uh, even at worldwide level uh, a critical moment on youth. Uh, if we simply look at what we have in terms of needs, uh, the non-education, non-employment, in, uh, uh, in traineeship and uh, apprenticeship people, uh, we have more than 15 million young people in these circumstances from uh, 14 to the 29 years old. So this is really a, a challenge for ourselves. And if we look back also the dramatic situation that, and the dramatic events that have happened some uh, weeks ago uh, in uh, one of the capitals at the uh, European Union, we can see that we have something to do. And we have something to do in two different areas. We have something to do to support you in terms of increasing employability and increasing uh, active participation in the society. So these are the two main areas where we need to, to intervene. Of course, we have done a lot of things. We can't say that we are starting, uh, starting from scratch, uh, not on the contrary. We have done a number of uh, 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 initiatives. We have identified a number of challenges in terms of employment, in terms of involving people and young people on the society. We have identified a number of policies and tools that we can support young people to, to, to participate. But above all, we have to now to do some actions. We, ne we have now to really draw some ideas on how can we participate, how can we involve more, how can we support more young people. So this is the big challenge we have in front of us. Action, action and action. So what have we done in this case? We, we know that the situation is not good, as I said. Uh, we have this kind of uh, uh, situation about uh, uh, young people not employed. But above all, what we have is that, in fact, more than 20% of young people have not the, the adequate, as Minister was saying, the necessary skills. And when they have the necessary skills, the skills are not those that we, we are, are needed by the market. These skills mismatch. We have more than one in six young people leaving the school without or with very few qualifications. We have a lot of young people leaving the school and by consequences losing the access to the market. So we have to do something. But in order in, in, to, to, to clarify even more the situation, you know that uh, we have a lot of people unemployed at European level. But dramatically, the young people represent two times the number of uh, people unemployed. So a lot of, situa lot of dramatic situation is, over, is happening over the Europe. We have some member states where we have more than 50% of people unemployed. So we have to intervene. How can we do something about that? So this challenge have uh, given uh, to our policymakers uh, the responsibility to draw some conclusions. One of them is the new program Erasmus Plus that in, is in place now represents a, a big increase vis-a-vis -vis the previous situation. So we had an increase of more than 40% in the program. And above all, we have 
in the European sector, in the specific domain dealing with young people. This does not mean that Erasmus Plus will not address young people. If we talk about schools, if we talk about vocational training, if we talk about higher education, all are young. But specifically, to address the young people, we can say that we have for the next uh, six years, not seven because we started last year, the next six years we have more than 1.5 billion euros to spend about this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this program. So we have the opportunity. The question now is what kind of the ideas could be more representative for that? So this is one of the suggestions, if I may so say so, uh, for you in the next two, two days, is draw some conclusions, draw some ideas. We have, uh, as you probably know, in uh, two months' time, more or less, uh, an European week for, for youth, where we can draw when we can have a number of initiatives. So I would like you to draw some conclusions and some ideas and came, us, came back to us with concrete elements and concrete suggestions. How can we be more active in order to support young people employability? How can we support young people to be more entrepreneurial? And how can we, in another way, active participate or have the active participation of the public sector and the private sector. Because as, as it was mentioned, we have not only to have this as a responsibility from the public authorities, but this is also a society responsibility. So how can we have the private sector involved in this case for supporting this movement of creating more skills creating more, uh, more uh, capacity for, for young people. How can we, for example, you have heard talk about the youth guarantee. Youth guarantee uh, intended and created by the European uh, uh, Council to uh, ensure that all the young people below 25 have the capacity to have or have the possibility to have either uh, an employment, a traineeship, an apprenticeship, or continue to be uh, um, in the education system. But how can we extend this to the use normal work? You participate in some cases in the voluntary service, in the European voluntary service, in the, in the use work. How can we link both, both elements in the same, in the same, in the same effort? As regard your participation in this conference, I would like very much to, to welcome and to thank again the youth, uh, uh, um, the, the, the Latin um, uh, presidency for, for doing that. If I may say some words about what we have already reached, you have already reached. Well, last year and the years before, in the previous program, we have more and more uh, active participation from young people. We had per year more than uh, two, 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 250,000 young people working around in the youth work or in participating in the, in, the youth, in, the, in the voluntary service. So we have to reinforce this and we have to have to put this really in the, in the center of our discussions. How can we, for example, link more and more non-formal with the formal aspects. This is done in a very, in a way, informal way. How could we do this in a more systemic way? So these are the main challenges that we have for, for, for the future. So I'm sure that the youth cooperation between Eastern Partnership countries and the other European countries can be further strengthened by our policies, by our programs, by the conference like this that we are doing here now in uh, uh, in Riga. So let me wish you uh, an interesting and very fruitful discussion in this, uh, in this forum. And please, come out with concrete ideas. This is what we have to have. Uh, you know that we have <laughs> one of the, the, the issues we are trying to push in the European, in the European Youth, uh, Youth Week is this new idea of the Ideas Lab. Please, let your imagination work and come out with very concrete ideas, please. So I'm looking forward to receive your recommendations and together with our partners, I can assure you that we will close look on how can we implement 
how can you implement your ideas? Because as I said, we can have all the main good words, the good policies at European level, but action should be made at your level. So I'm convinced that our efforts will contribute to determine the ways to improve young people's skills, competencies, and active participation in the society. Many thanks. All the best for this next two days of work. And again, give us some good ideas, please. Thank you very much. Thank you for the Directorate General of uh, Education and Culture being with us, supporting this event, being part of the, uh, of the great uh, organizers of this event. Uh, I would like uh, to say that this is, a, this is a space actually for us to come with these ideas, innovative ideas. This is why we are here. And we would like to invite another uh, guest for the inspiration, uh, also representing the European Commission. Uh, Mr. Mathieu Bousquet, uh, who is the head of the acting head of the regional unit for the neighborhood east in the European Commission. Please. <coughs> Thank you, Natalia. Good morning, everybody. Madam Speaker, Madam Minister, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here to be here, and we would like to thank you first, I mean, the Latvian Presidency for organizing so well this event in this very impressive new and modern library, which is, of course, I mean, a place dedicated to research and knowledge sharing, which I think is very symbolic for our meeting today. I would like also to thank the Latvian Youth Agency for organizing this event. Seeing how many we are today gathered in, uh, in Riga, I trust this event will be a success to our road to Riga the Riga Summit in May, where the forum's recommendation will be presented. As Ambassador Poikant said, I mean, looking backwards at the Eastern Partnership since Vilnius, I mean, we've made substantial progress. I'm not going to repeat where we are now, but I just wanted to highlight the association agreement and the DCFTA with three countries, and also the entry into force of the visa-free regime with Moldova, which I think is so important also for you, youth people, when you want to travel. The road to reform will not stop here, and our support to the Eastern Partnership engagement of society and youth will be essential to provide stronger foundations for democracy. It is indeed very important that the Eastern Partnership addresses issues that concern people's lives, strengthening people-to-people -people contacts. We therefore need to continue to develop a dialogue and exchanges between youth, helping them getting closer to each other and also closer to the EU values. We strongly believe in these people-to-people -people contacts, in mobility activities such as the ones provided under Erasmus Plus program to further increase young people's sense of citizenship, their capacity to learn, to be open to new cultures, new ideas, and to learn new skills, which will be key to open them broader perspectives. I am also aware of the high expectations regarding the opening by the Commission and by my unit of a new window, um, a new regional program dedicated to youth on the model of the previous Eastern Partnership Youth in Action window. I can already assure you that we are working seriously on opening the new program for youth in 2016, specifically for the Eastern Partnership. But before rushing into a new program, we have also to take stock about what happened and what happened particularly under the Eastern Partnership Youth Window uh, during the period 2012 and 2013. Just let me give you some figures which are specific for the Eastern Partnership. The window was open, calls for proposals were managed by both the uh, agency and EU in Youth in Action national agencies for a total amount of 31.5 million euros. In total, more than 1,650 projects were financed more than 38,000 people of Eastern Partnership or going to Eastern Partnership, young people were involved in various activities, including training and networking, youth exchange, and of course, the European, the European Voluntary Service. So we launched the evaluation, and in December 2014, we received the results. I think we welcome the report because it has shown the great interest of Eastern Partnership and EU youth organizations in increasing their cooperation on youth. 
Mobility projects were very popular and most effective in targeting in particular those with fewer opportunities living in rural areas, which we should not forget. On key competencies, young people replied that the project helped them to increase notably their cultural awareness, uh, their active citizenship, and uh, their communication in foreign language, as well as their social and civic competences. Intercultural learning and mobility were considered as major benefits, only followed by employability. But there were also some weaknesses of the program, and the weaknesses are related to the monitoring, to the level of regional cooperation, and the recommendations related to the need to further reach young people with fewer opportunities living in deprived urban and rural areas via mobility and local projects. So the evaluators are here today, so it will be I think they will present their report in full details tomorrow, but I think it's also important to get your feedback from this program, particularly those who know this program or who have participated to it. In the meantime, you can already access it online, and I understand this house is full of Wi-Fi, so you can access it quite easily. We will do uh, our best also to ensure that the new program takes into account fully the results of the uh, evaluation, but also your feedback, the feedback that Antonio was asking you to give today. We want to ensure that the future program is sustainable, also that it ensures some predictability of funding for the youth, that we get more visibility, and that we facilitate appropriate coordination with other youth initiatives. I am also sure that the discussion today and tomorrow will feed our reflection on, on this orientation. In the meantime, we should not forget that we are not working only on, uh, on the aspect of use through the use employability, but we also uh, look at the employability through support to the private sector. And we have important programs in terms of supporting private sector and particularly SME development and also micro-entrepreneurs, which some of you young people may become uh, in, in some days. So the third business forum will take place here in, uh, in Riga uh, on the 21st of May to pr promote business cooperation between EU and Eastern partnership countries. And this should also lead to increased opportunities for use. So really we feel that this is an excellent opportunity to help us designing a program that suits you, that profits also the employability of uh, uh, the young people and also targets the young people which are uh, living in uh, deprived areas in urban and rural areas of the Eastern Partnership countries. On this note, and I think I've exhausted my time, I wish all of you a very, and all of us, a very successful forum. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Busquet. We are really looking forward in the region to hear more news about New Window. So, hope more news will come soon. <laughs> yes, please. Um, and now I would like to invite, actually, one of our main hosts of this event, our main organizer, I would say, Mrs. Diana Sproge, Director of the uh, National Agency of Erasmus Plus of Latvia. Dear Speaker of the Parliament, Minister, Ambassador at Large for Eastern Partnership, Representatives of the European Commission, Participants of the Eastern Partnership Youth Forum, on behalf of the Agency for International Programs for Youth, I would like to welcome all of you here in Riga as a second youth uh, Eastern Partnership Forum. The aim of the forum is to present and exchange best practices, to develop and strengthen uh, cooperation and networking between participants from different countries and to strengthen cooperation and networking between different sectors and to bring greater visibility for this cooperation and networking. The first Eastern Partnership uh, Youth Forum, uh, which gathered uh, more than 200 people, took place in uh, Vilnius, uh, uh, in Kaunas, in Lithuania, 
in 2013. The event had a very significant impact on the development of youth work, on the development and recognition of non-formal learning, both in Erasmus Plus program countries and in Eastern Partnership countries. Taking uh, into account the topical issues in the youth field, the second Youth Eastern Partnership Forum will uh, focus on youth employment. Uh, during the two uh, forum working days, participants will analyze, discuss, develop recommendations, look for new ways, new sorts of activities, and new best possible solutions on combating youth unemployment, mainly through participation in different mobility programs, Erasmus Plus including, cross-sectoral cooperation in all possible levels, local, regional and national level, to exchange, uh, of, uh, to exchange good practice and innovations, and uh, through youth, develop, youth policy development. The forum is organized in partnership with the European Commission, namely DG Education and Culture, and DG Neighborhood and, and Enlargement Negotiations, Ministry of Education and Science of the Republic of Latvia, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Latvia, Ministry of Welfare of the Republic of Latvia, the European Youth Forum, and many other organizations and institutions. And I would like to express my thanks to uh, all partners for their cooperation, for their contribution, for their inputs, for their work already done during the preparation stage of this forum and the work that will be done during the two hard working days of the uh, Youth Forum in Riga. I would also like to ask uh, participants of the forum to be active, to be innovative, to exchange their ideas, to exchange best practices. I hope that this forum will be a good ground for strengthening existing, um, existing partnerships uh, and building new partnerships, new cooperation for the future. And I believe that um, this forum uh, will raise deeper understanding about different cultural contexts in different countries. And I also believe that this will help to break stereotypes and uh, strengthen European val values and principles of democracy, democracy. I wish you very successful forum days. I wish you, I wish you hard work and I wish you luck and enjoy your stay in Riga. Thank you, Ms. Prode. Thanks for Latvian National Agency for uh, organizing this event and for hosting this event here in Riga, in Latvia. Um, I would like to make actually a small announcement for all of us and uh, we can also go further to see what kind of activities we are going to have during the forum. But before that I would like to really uh, say big, big, big thank you for the, our guests who came today who find the time in their tough schedule and who greeted us and um, yes, big thank you and big applause for you. <laughs> <laughs>